Research and there's one asylum in particular in the city I live in, Leeds, um, that's this huge monolith of a place. And um, we started doing research, and the stories of the patients were so horrible. I mean, they were just vile. And most of the ghost stories, I think nearly all the ghost stories in the whole series, are based on real patients' stories. And obviously, in episode one, the ghost stories are a little bit smaller than, than the, rest of the, the rest of the series because we're setting so much up in that kind of pilot way. But, um, but yeah, nearly all the patient stories are things we, uh, we use as inspiration for the real thing. And now, you previously did comedy. Your last show was a comedy, correct? It was a comedy, yeah. Here, back here. Sorry, can you up here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so your last show was a comedy. <laughs> I don't like to be pigeonholed. <laughs> um, did the success of shows like Being Human come into play when you were thinking about this? Hugely, I think um, Neil and I, who we co wrote, I mean, we were pitching sci fi ideas about six years ago. No way. I mean, it, things have changed so much in Britain. I think obviously the success of Doctor Who has opened that door, but I think the act, seriously, but, but being human, I think I, I can't praise that show enough. I, I mean, it's a fantastic show. And, um, and I just think off the back of that, it, it showed that you can. It just gave people an appetite. I mean, writers, we've always wanted to write this stuff, but, but I think execs, you have to get past these people, and if they see that this works, then it you know, changes a lot of things. So yeah, I think it's great to be part of that resurgence in, in British supernatural sci fi. You know. In addition to just researching the, the asylums, have either of you had any kind of paranormal experience? I love this. Who has this a few times? Um, you start here. Uh, I, yeah, I'd say, I don't believe in ghosts per se, but um, I, I had an experience, I went to a, this like barn years ago with the next girlfriend we were, you know, bedding down for the evening. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I heard this weird noise, it was like a scratching sound, or uh, well, I thought it was a scratching sound. I kind of investigated, went upstairs, and it was this old barn, a mezzanine, if you can imagine, where the, where the bedroom was. So there wasn't anything between, you know, there was no place where a rat could be. I think it must be a rat. And there was this weird place in the middle of the uh, ceiling, which just like I could hear this hair, honestly, like someone brushing their hair. Um, and yeah, so it was horrendous, and uh, that ex girlfriend was dead. So. <laughs> <laughs> I can't follow that. Right. <laughs> you know, seriously, I do think that. Um, the weird thing was, I think, I, I don't know about believing in ghosts, but I think that buildings have, uh, an old building has something about it, because I think it has this history to it, and obviously we have a lot of old buildings in Panama. Um, the weird thing is, the asylum that we, we, we got a lot of these stories from, from the research, we hadn't actually gone and visited it until after we were just about to start shooting. We went out to see it. And they were kind of breaking me into luxury flats. It was like exactly the thing that we were writing. We were talking to the security guard, and he was like, I don't like this place at night. <laughs> and like, one of the shit. Yeah, I know, was it? One, and they said so they converted one uh, building in these amazing, really high end luxury flats. The next building, still derelict, had a mortuary slab still there. <laughs> so I'm like, I don't know that I'd want to live there. <laughs> so I think, I think building, but I think when you look at this building and when you you look at the history of the place, which is what we wanted to try and bring to the screens, it's just got something bad going on. And it doesn't matter what you, what you put on the walls, so it's going to come out, you know? I, I, I think that's true. Now, Jed, this guy obviously he does see dead people. <laughs> but, um, and he did do some time in his own in a, in a institution as 
Wow. Yeah. Do we think, or will we find out as the first series goes on, that he might also have, you know, some issues <laughs> in addition to just seeing dead people? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> as, as the first, uh, as the series develops, you find out more and more about him, and he's had this pretty um, checkered past. But that was quite an interesting thing to be into because obviously he's a kind of suppose a, a, a ghost whisperer. <laughs> Looking at it, because he would have been um, diagnosed with something like paranoid schizophrenia. So, you know, looking at what symptoms he may have had, or what uh, how people would have viewed him, and how he would have been ostracised, and that's why he's got no mates, basically. Um, but yeah, and, and then kind of marrying that with the fact that he does actually see, you know, he has visions, he can, he has some strange connection to the dead. Um, so yeah. Is it in your contract that you have to either bathe or at least count? <laughs> 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 well, we were actually just talking about that. I was saying that. Uh, when you're doing that bathroom scene, and I said to the director, I said, I mean, he, he kind of feels pretty awkward in this flat, I imagine. Yeah, he, doesn't, he doesn't really know the people. Do you think he would just bolts out with his shirt off? I kind of feel like he wouldn't have a shirt on. Really. <laughs> no, he'd have a shirt <laughs> We were joking about this today. It's the tiny towel. In that scene, what I love is the tiny towel. What would you use that towel for? I love it. It's too big to be a face cloth. What the hell is it? Everyone's got a towel. We're going to go to this guy right here. Hi. Hi. Uh, you're going to mention Ghost Whisper earlier. Mm. Uh, my question to you is what kind of plans do you going to have with uh, overarching storylines to keep it from being so, so weak story? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Um, well, I mean, it, it, is, it is Ghost of the Week. I mean, we, that's something we absolutely want to do. Um, but the Ghost of the Week is part of a much, there's a, there's a much huge big serial story which we hope is, is just as engaging. And what we love is the idea of all the writers. We, we, I mean, my grandfather Neil is a massive fan of Lost, and we love the idea of clues and the inscription above the door, and there's other stuff that we hope that people will notice. You know, when we hope to do Beyond season one, you know, with things that will reveal themselves slowly. So it isn't just about Ghost of the Week. Obviously, also the characters' relationships we hope are important. But I think the thing we want this show to be is is scary as well. I mean, I think that a lot of it's a lot of what movies do a lot of time, but I don't think TV does a great deal. I think it does supernatural, but I don't know that a lot of supernatural is actually that frightening. And I think that, and certainly later in the series, just, we have some really, you know. The biggest compliment I've had is people say they don't like watching it on their own, and I think that's, that's what we wanted, you know. Well, thank you for bringing me. It was really a lot of fun. Um, I'm wondering what the full release schedule is. It starts in October, you had said, but what, how many episodes? And six. And is, was it straight through all six, or are we... I, I, I believe it's straight through all six, the BBC America from the moment. Yes, and, um, I mean, we're, it's, it's really time for us being part of Supernatural Saturdays, Beauty America, the Hallowed Doctor who saw is very exciting and things we've got really fantastic. So, um, uh, yeah, six, six season one. I know, I know to Americans that seems horribly short, but uh, <laughs> how we roll in the UK, so. <laughs> Physically, physical contact. I think the idea was that the 
the angrier the ghost is and the, the kind of darker their past and the, the worse way in which they passed away, then the more powerful they are and as a result the, kind of, the harder the battle is. I think one of the things we wanted to do was not give Jet a superpower so it was just easy for him to solve the ghost in one way. So like, there's not one thing he can do. It's not like he has to just dig up the body or he has to do, you know, we have to make it really, really hard for him. Which sometimes we regret it when we were writing it, but he was, you know, he has to find a specific problem to that specific ghost. Alright, thank, well, thank you. And I just got my stop sign. Um, so I want to thank both of you guys. I want to thank all of you guys for being here.